I would say, I'm, I'm, and I'm just conjecturing here, mm -hmm. that when you're looking at 40-year long-term trends and you know things that happen in the atmosphere, one of the things that you're going to discover is that our burning of fossil fuels is a deleterious activity with the health to the health of the planet, right? So could it be that if I wanted to support the multi, multi-billion dollar industry that pays me a lot of money, could it be that if I wanted to support them, I would get rid of that information? It's certainly, yeah. You, you, how do you, if you can't monitor the status of the planet, mm -hmm. then it's harder to track kind of the impacts and changes to it. Now, it's this type of stuff, again, it's... I wouldn't necessarily even make it that strong of a one-to-one -one connection. Okay. There's, there's a deeper that political... Was me doing that. <laughs> well, I think, it, but it's, it's fair. There's a, there's a deeper aspect of this that's certainly part of that motivation. Okay. And, but ironically, you know, we're talking about these other parts of NASA science. Earth science isn't even the thing that's cut the most. I mean, so that's where I think there, there's something kind of going beyond this. What is cut the most? Kate? Astrophysics. Astrophysics. Yeah, like the actual, like just looking out. So and out. then Neil's yeah. not here. Coincidence? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps not. So everybody just understand if you're just tuning in. Chuck is here per always, but the, our guest is Casey Dreyer, who works nominally. You work for me. Nominally, yes. Some, some disclosure. <laughs> uh, but I just do what he tells me. He has studied the NASA budget in a way that is extraordinary. You have written software. You've got used artificial intelligence. Tell us about your wonky nerdiness. <laughs> well, I'll start with my, I'm the chief of space policy for the planet. Society. Yes. And I'm also, I, I'll just plug, host of Space Policy Edition of Planetary Radio, my podcast. On Which, a basis. for those of you, I'm sure it's your primary podcast, and this is your secondary, of course. <laughs> Space <laughs> Policy Edition. I is promise it's way more exciting than it sounds. <laughs> it's, well, it's very important. To, so look, everybody who, who listens and watches Star Talk will be ultimately interested in the NASA budget. Absolutely. Because NASA is the largest space uh, organization, at least on this hemisphere, in this hemisphere, and how does it get funded so that we can make these discoveries in astrophysics or whatever else yeah. it might be? Back to you. Well, well, funding's part of it, and I think there's also just motivations. I'm, I'm interested in why things happen. I always say, you know, all these missions that we just talked about offhandedly, you know, to study the Earth, to look that deeper into space, to go to Mars— Someone has to make those decisions. Mm. Someone has to rally and provide resources to build them. They have to design them, think really hard about them. Those don't just happen, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I just want to emphasize to everybody, the word mission is uh, not code, but a shorthand for the spacecraft itself and all the things that happen on the ground and all the people employed on mm. the ground to enable the data yeah. to come down here. Back to you. Yeah, well, it, it, they don't happen in isolation. Ironically, they don't just happen in a vacuum, right, in uh -oh. space. Mm -hmm. See how, the, see what he did there? <laughs> see, yeah, the vacuum. I, I yeah, space. It. You yeah. got it? You're with us, Chuck? Uh, you know, I'm, it's a little <laughs> difficult to keep up, but I, ca I caught on there. No, it isn't. <laughs> you fool with me. Go ahead, please, Casey. Oh, well. So again, I'm ha I mentioned the why, and so I love the outputs, of course, too, and, and I want to get more of those, and I think by studying the whys of how they come together, the incentive structures, the reasons why things actually manifest themselves, right? You're talking about in the U.S. government. Well, yeah, and particularly in the U.S. here, because it's the largest and it's where we live and spend most of our money on it. How does this idea that the forms is like some sparking neurons in one scientist's brain end up cascading to build something, multi-billion dollar spacecraft out of metal and silicon and what have you, and then launch to a different planet and return this data and discover something completely new? Wow. It's that process from neuron to building the spacecraft that I think is so valuable, but also fascinating. It's like physics. Why do things happen? You try to model why that happens to understand it better. So there are people right now, not in this audience, and I know it's not this audience, but there are people who will hear what you just said uh, and then say, but so what? Mm -hmm. What's that got to do with me? How does that help me? How does and doesn't it, cutting the budget leave more money for yeah, the rest of our right, important things? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, why are we, and this is the term, sure. wasting money yeah. on going to another planet or getting to Mars mm -hmm. or looking at exoplanets, all this stuff that you guys do. You're wasting money. We could be using that money for something else. That's, um, yeah. that's the argument that you hear mm -hmm. most commonly against. Yep spending money for yeah. something like NASA. Or that we don't have the money. We're broke. Or we don't. So we, right. we can't spend it. So 
it's, I always like to put this in context, right? And I know Neil has said this very eloquently before, but you know, NASA is just this tiny, tiny fraction. So if you want priorities, most of the money the U.S. government spends is on healthcare, national defense, and, and support for, yeah, and social support, right? So Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, military, all that stuff. It's vast, three quarters of all spending is that. And then NASA is this year little sliver, less than a half of a percent. And then of, of NASA, right, a third of NASA roughly goes to science. So you're talking about a third of less than half a percent, like 0.1% of every tax dollar, right? You're talking about fractional pennies at this point. Mm -hmm. So it's not a lot, right, in the scope of when you're spending $6 trillion, right? This is akin to, you know, we spend more money on pet food in this country than we do on go sending things into space for scientific reasons, right? We can afford this. I we mean, can dogs, walk and chew Dogs got to eat, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so we I can afford this. some very fancy pet food places. We can days. afford this, and yet... There is a movement to not even spend this money. Right? Correct. There's a, an overall desire to kind of cut, cut, cut without really consideration of what does that mean more broadly. And I'd say to your, to your question, Chuck, it's more of a, there's, a, there's practical reasons why we do space. And I think we talked about some with, with climate. You know, we want to understand why we can live on this one planet and not others. And by understanding other planets, we've learned how unique and rare our planet is. You look at Venus and Mars right next to us. Those are your two kind of worst case scenarios you either get way too hot with global warming which and global warming was actually an idea spurred by observations of venus, venus. yeah venus right? is, you can make an argument that in the modern era climate change on earth was discovered on venus yeah, i think yeah. and is, is that because venus has runaway greenhouse mm -hmm. effect boom 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 and it was our imaginations as humans are so limited that we actually we need to go out and look because then we're surprised about what can actually happen. especially my old boss am i right <laughs> <laughs> Limited imagination. Yeah. No, go ahead. That's, he is the a, problem. It's a solid joke. But uh, by going out and looking at these things, we're like, oh, this can happen. Things like dark energy. You know, these things about what we don't know surprises us by definition. And it's that surprise that pushes us to modify and improve our understanding of the systems in which we inhabit as humans, which is the cosmos. And so it, we are behooved <laughs> to try to understand them better so we can live better in it, mm -hmm. you know? And then there's, I'd say, a deeper philosophical thing of do we want to be people who are looking forward to new things or do we kind of hunch over and just swipe on TikTok for the rest of our existence as a society? I know what my vote is. <laughs>